Dear Ecuador, Before diving into my story about you, I must confess and apologize. I booked this trip simply because I found cheap flight tickets. I did not know much about you, and to be honest, I did not expect much. I am sorry for underestimating you. Now, let me show everyone why you are one of the most vibrant and breathtaking places on Earth. In this video, I'll share my one-week itinerary for exploring the Ecuador mainland during Christmas and New Year season, where the strange and unique holiday traditions added an unforgettable touch to this trip. So let the story begin. Welcome to Quito, a city steeped in mystery and ancient legends. Long before the Spanish arrived, this land was home to the Quito people, who gave the city its current name. They were followed by the mighty Inca Empire, whose remnants whispered tales of lost civilizations and hidden treasures. Imagine walking the same path that ancient people once tread, where the air is filled with the secrets of Andes and the scent of sacred incense. Quito's streets are like veins of history, pulsating the stories of conquests and cultures blending over millennia. Nowadays, Quito is known as the oldest capital city in South America. It is celebrating 490 years in 2024. After establishing Quito in 1534, the Spanish colonies spread Christianity among the indigenous populations, and with that, they introduced the tradition of celebrating Christmas. Indigenous peoples adapted elements of the Christian holiday, infusing them with their own cultural symbols and practices. Today, the city is known for its vibrant Christmas festivities, including parades, nativity scenes, and religious events. Unfortunately, we arrived too late and missed the Christmas parade the day before Christmas. But I hope you guys can plan your flights accordingly to see it. While we missed the lively Christmas parade, the festive spirit of Quito was still enchanting. As we made our way to the restaurant I had booked for our Christmas Eve dinner, the city was aglow with twinkling lights and the anticipation of the night celebration. I was filled with excitement to celebrate Christmas in such a vibrant setting. The restaurant, located in a boutique hotel with an upscale rooftop, was magical inside. It offered us a lovely Christmas Eve dinner with a breathtaking view of El Panecillo, where the Virgin of Quito stands watch over the city. This hill, once a sacred site for the Quito people, was believed to be a portal to the heavens. Under the watchful gaze of the Virgin, we dined on exquisite dishes that beautifully combined local flavors with Christmas traditions, surrounded by the vibrant energy of Quito. My Christmas day in Quito began with this view of the modern part of the city surrounded by the Andes, like guardians, that still refuse to reveal ancient Quito's secrets. We rented an apartment in Quito for two nights. A quick note for future travelers. When booking a two-bedroom apartment in Ecuador, be prepared for a surprise. It's often a one-bedroom space, with a dining room and kitchen. This was an unexpected twist for us, but it's all part of the adventure. It's time to dive deeper into the adventure and explore the historic center of Quito. What are the surprises or secrets does it hide from us? As we made our way to Independence Square, I could not help but feel the weight of history. This was the very heart of Quito's struggle for freedom, where the echoes of the final days of Spanish Empire still linger. In 1809, Quito became the first city in South America to declare independence from Spanish rule, sparking a movement that would eventually lead to the liberation of the entire continent. The Spanish Empire ruled for three centuries here, but every empire has to end, eventually. 
Basilica del Voto Nacional was already built during the independence time of Ecuador. The church is famously considered unfinished. The legend surrounding it states that if the basilica is ever completed, it will signal the end of the world, which is why certain parts remain deliberately incomplete. Basilica del Voto Nacional is one of the largest neo-Gothic basilicas in the Americas and its design is inspired by the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. What's truly really unique about the basilica is the incorporation of Ecuadorian wildlife into its architecture. Instead of traditional gargoyles, you'll find stone carvings of iguanas, armadillos and Galapagos tortoises. I climbed up the steep staircases leading to the bell towers where I was rewarded with the panoramic view of Quito. The city stretched out below me, the Andes rising majestically in the background, protecting the city from the outside world. Up here, above the noise of the streets, I felt like I was closer to the secrets of the city, closer to the stories that are etched into its stones. The majestic basilica is visible from almost all parts of the historic center. I so much enjoyed a view of it from a rooftop restaurant, where I tried some traditional Ecuadorian desserts. The first one, Dulce de Igo, is a sweet dessert made from figs and cheese. Quito people believed that figs had magical properties. They were often used in rituals to bring prosperity and good fortune. Hope it will bring good fortune to me as well. Another dessert, Kimbalito, is a light and fluffy cake steamed in banana leaves. It is believed that the Incas used to prepare a similar dish as an offering to the gods, believing that the banana leaves represented the earth fertility. The narrow streets of the historic center of Quito led us to Cale La Ronda, one of the oldest and most iconic streets in the city. This street was once an Inca trail, and later Spanish colonists built houses along it. The narrow, cobblestone alley is like a journey back in time, with its well-preserved colonial architecture and charming pathways. Today the street is very touristy, with a lot of restaurants and bars. As night fell over the Andes, the air turned crisp and cool, a stark contrast to the warm daylight. Despite being near the equator, Quito's elevation keeps it from getting hot. By the way, Quito is the second highest capital city in the world. Because of high elevation, Malaria does not spread here, as mosquitoes can survive at this altitude. High elevation brings chilly evenings, but Quito has its own way of keeping you warm. One way is canilazo, a traditional hot drink made from sugarcane liquor, cinnamon and a splash of citrus fruit naranjilla that grows among the Andes. Sipping on canilazo I could almost imagine the indigenous people centuries ago gathered around fires, sharing stories as the scent of cinnamon filled the air. For dinner I had a chance to try something truly unique, a guinea pig. They call it kui here. This dish has deep roots in Indian culture, dating back to the Quito people and later embraced by the Incas. For them, kui was not just food but a sacred offering to the gods, a tradition that has survived through the ages. Quito, with its blend of the old and the new, had already begun to weave its magic around me, making me feel like I was a part of its timeless story. On the third day, we had to leave Quito, but it was not goodbye, it was just a see you soon, Today, our journey takes us to a place where the invisible line is dividing our world. It's time to visit the equator, known locally as Mitad del Mundo, the middle of the world. 
The Mita del Mundo monument stands tall, making more than just a geographical line. It is a realm where science, myth and history intertwine. This is where ancient indigenous people believe the earth energy converged, creating a sacred balance between heaven and earth. Some say that during the equinox, when day and night are perfectly balanced, you can witness a rare phenomenon, the shadowless sun. On those days, as the sun reaches its zenith, the monuments cast no shadow, as if time itself pauses for a brief moment in respect for the balance of the universe. I stood on the line, my feet planted on both sides of the world. I took a moment to absorb the energy of this place. It's an experience unlike any other, to be in two places at once, to feel the connection between the two halves of the earth. But here is the twist. The iconic monument, grand as it is, does not actually sit on the exact equatorial line. Despite the best efforts of 18th century geographers, modern GPS technology revealed that they missed the true middle of the world by about 240 meters. It's a small but fascinating mistake. Still, the spirit of the place remains intact and the experience is no less profound. Before we leave, there is one final ritual to complete. Inside the monument, they offer to stamp our passports with a special mark, declaring that we've stood at the center of the world. Or close enough, it's more than just ink on a page. It's a symbol of the journey, much better than a souvenir. Leaving the middle of the world behind the other day, we journeyed deeper into the Andes, deeper into the Ecuadorian heart. The road twisted and climbed, carrying us higher and higher until the world below was lost in mist and shadow. By the time we arrived at Kilatoa, night had fallen and the lake, our destination, remained hidden, its mysteries veiled by darkness. Morning greeted us with a chill that beat through our clothing, a reminder that we were now nearly 4,000 meters above sea level. The air was thin, each breath a little harder, each step a little slower. As the first light of day crept over the horizon, we made our way to the crater's edge, drawn by the promise of what lay beyond. Kilatoa Lake appeared suddenly. It shimmered like a jewel, its surface impossibly still, as though it held its breath in anticipation of our arrival. Legend tells that this lake, born from a volcanic eruption over 800 years ago, is now a gateway to another world. The Kichwa people, who have called this mountain's home for centuries, believe that spirits live in its depth, guarding ancient secrets and watching over those who dare to approach. Around us, the Kichwa moved quietly, their presence is a natural part of the landscape. Wearing vibrant ponchos and skirts, their traditional clothing added splashes of color to the muted tones of the highlands. Among them were llamas and alpacas, creatures that seemed almost mystical in this setting. Their woodly coats were thick against the cold, their eyes calm and knowing. These animals, revered by the Kichwa are more than just livestock. They are companions, guardians and symbols of life in this harsh, beautiful lands. The cold began to seep into our bones, a reminder of the altitude and the unforgiving nature of this place. Seeking warmth, we found refuge in the local cuisine, a bowl of crema zapallo, rich and comforting. The story goes that the soup was a gift from Pachamama, the Earth Mother, who blessed the land with the power of Zapayo, the pumpkin. 
Next came morocha, a thick sweet drink made from corn, milk and raisins that seemed to chase the cold away with each sip. There is a tale about El Caminante, a restless spirit who wandered the mountain path in search of warmth. One cold night, a kind villager left a cup of morocha outside her door, and when El Caminante drank it, he finally found peace. Since then, Marocha became a ritual of warmth, a way to bring comfort to the weary and the lost. As much as we wished to stay and witness the sunset over the lake, we knew our journey was far from over. The road ahead called to us, leading away from the chill of the mountains to a place where warmth awaited. With one last look at the lake, we left Kilatoa, carrying with us the whispers of the ancients. In almost four hours, our journey led us to Banyos, a town nestled in a green valley, where the hot springs bubble up from beneath the earth, offering a stark contrast to the cold we'd left behind. Banyos is a place where the rhythm of life seems to follow the pulse of the land itself. Known for its thermal bath and vibrant lively atmosphere, this town sits at the edge of the Tangurao volcano, whose occasional eruptions remind us of nature's power and unpredictability. But the volcano remained dormant during our stay here. After a lot of driving and changing locations during the last several days, we decided to spend our day 5 slow and relax at the Piscinas Termas de la Virgin, a renowned hot spring complex. We enjoyed steaming pools, each one varying in temperature, from comfortably warm to pleasantly hot. The mineral waters, rich with natural elements, felt like a gentle embrace, easing away the remnants of our mountain journey. But the experience did not end with just the bath. I indulged in a deeply relaxing massage and a revitalizing chocolate wrap, both of which were surprisingly affordable. The combination of these treatments made it a great day for me. The surrounding scenery, lush vegetation, cascading waterfalls, and the distant peaks of the Andes provided a breathtaking backdrop to our time in the bath. Legends speak of the springs as a sacred place, blessed by the spirit of the volcano. It is said that the thermal waters have healing properties, a gift from the earth to those who seek for both physical and spiritual rejuvenation. Our evening in Banyos was spent exploring the town's vibrant streets, where colorful markets and lively eateries offered a taste of local life. We wandered through the bustling streets, savoring the warmth of the local cuisine and reflecting on the journey that had brought us from the icy heights of Kilatoa to this welcoming heaven of heat and relaxation. The road was calling on us again on day 6. It twisted like a serpent as we drove from the cool heights of Banyos toward the edge of the Amazon basin. Our first stop was the Diablo waterfall, a force of nature that felt as if the earth itself had opened a door into another world. We walked along a narrow winding path that led us closer to the falls, each step bringing us deeper into the misty spray. As we approached, the roar of the water grew louder filling the air with a primal energy that made the ground beneath our feet seem to vibrate. The air was thick with moisture, and the sound of the waterfall drowned out everything else, leaving us in a world where the only thing that mattered was the incredible sight before us. The mist rose like a ghostly curtain, obscuring the edges of reality and pulling us into the heart of the waterfall's fury. Some even say that if you look closely, you can catch a glimpse of the devil's face in the mist, 
And this is how this waterfall gained its name. Reluctantly, we tore ourselves away from the waterfall, knowing that the memory of this place would stay with us forever. The roar of Diablo and its energy still echoed in my mind. We stopped for lunch at a small, unassuming place on the side of the road. The kind of spot that makes you wonder if your stomach might regret it later. But it looks like the spirits of the Diablo waterfall protected us. After just a couple of hours of travel, we arrived at Mirador in the Churis. The rain began to fall as we arrived, a gentle drizzle that seemed to blend with the mist rising from the jungle. Mirador in Dichuris is more than just a viewpoint. It's a sacred space where the land and sky meet in a dance of shadows and light. The faces of ancient spirits carved into the rock watched over us as we walked through their mouth, a symbolic journey into the unknown. The vast expanse of the Amazon spread out before us, a living, breathing entity that pulsed with life. This is the domain of the jungle's creatures that I don't want to meet face to face here, like jaguars, anacondas, caimans or piranhas. But it is also home to people, seven indigenous tribes on Ecuador territory, each with their own stories, cultures and deep connection to this ancient land. Standing on the platform edge, I could feel that the vastness of the Amazon was overwhelming. Ecuador owns only 2% of the Amazon rainforest, but this 2% covers almost half of the country's entire territory. I would love to spend at least a week here, immersing myself in the jungle, but we only had a few hours. Among the most unforgettable moments of my journey was a giant rope swing, offering a thrill like no other. As I swung out over the abyss, it felt like I'd left the earth behind entirely, soaring into the unknown. The drizzle kept us cool, the sounds of the jungle wrapping around us like a lullaby. It was a moment of perfect tranquility, suspended in time and space, with the mysterious rainforest stretching out beneath us. The Amazon had welcomed us with open arms, its mysteries whispering through the trees. As we left Mirador in the Churis, we carried with us a sense of awe and respect for this vast, untamed world and the people who call it home. Day 7 was one for the thrill-seekers, a day where the line between excitement and madness blurred. Banyas is known for its adventures, but nothing could have prepared us for what lay ahead. Our first destination was La Casa del Arbol, famously known as the swing at the end of the world. Located on the edge of a mountain, the swing offers a view unlike any other the majestic Tangrao volcano, looming in the distance, its peak shrouded in clouds. The swing itself is simple, a wooden seat attached to ropes, but the sensation was both exhilarating and terrifying, as if one more push might send me soaring into the unknown. It was a moment of pure, unfiltered adrenaline, with nothing but the sky and the distant volcano before me. But the day was just beginning. Next on the agenda was a zip line, where we could choose to go either upside down or horizontally with our faces down. The ride sent us speeding across a canyon, with the wind rushing past and the landscape blurring below. The choice of how to take on the zip line added an extra layer of excitement, making it feel even more daring. Before the ultimate test of the day, we had to cross a hanging bridge with a glass floor. Each step felt unsteady, with the ground far below 
visible through the clear panels. It was a thrilling experience, adding to the excitement and anticipation. And then came the bridge jump. As I stood on the edge, looking down into the chasm below, the reality of what I was about to do hit me. The adrenaline surged, and my mind raced. But before I could second-guess myself, the floor went down below me. And I went down too, free falling. There was an option to jump by myself, but I could not do it. Next time, I'll jump. Banyas had shown us its wild side, pushing us to our limits and leaving us with memories that would last a lifetime. As the day came to an end, we sat down for our last dinner in Banyas, reflecting on the adventures we had just experienced. I savored traditional dishes that featured fish caught in the Amazon basin where we had been just the day before. It felt like the perfect way to close out our time in Banyos. It was a day that lived up to its name, the end of the world, or perhaps just crazy Banyos. Day 8 was December 31st, and it was time to return from Banyos to Quito. Normally the drive would take about 4 hours, but our journey took nearly 5, and here is why. <laughs> Men dressed like women were blocking the road and asking for money. It was both amusing and puzzling, but this is one of Ecuador's spirited New Year's traditions. These men, known as widows, dressed up to represent the grieving widows of the old year, mourning its passing. The money they collect is seen as a way to send off the old year and welcome the new one with prosperity. This tradition has deep roots in Ecuadorian culture, blending elements of satire, celebration and community spirit. The origins are thought to be linked to Spanish colonial practices and indigenous rituals, evolving over time into the colorful and lively custom it is today. Whatever it was, I really loved the spirit. <laughs> After navigating through this lively chaos, we finally arrived in Quito and checked into a charming boutique hotel. The view from the top was breathtaking, offering a panoramic glimpse of the city, preparing itself for the night's festivities. We had a New Year's dinner in a traditional Ecuadorian restaurant, where I decided to try something that's deeply rooted in local customs – beef tongue. This dish often finds its place at special occasions and gatherings, symbolizing the respect for using every part of the animal. As the night unfolded, we witnessed one of Ecuador's most striking New Year's traditions, the burning of effigies, known as Años Viejos. These effigies are often crafted to resemble famous people, fictional characters, or even unpopular politicians, like the president. They started appearing on people's cars and even roofs a few days before New Year's Eve. Burning of the effigies symbolizes a cleansing of the past year's misfortunes, making a way for a fresh start in the new year. At our hotel, the owner took the tradition a step further. She cursed the president effigy, shouting and slamming it against the ground. It was a powerful moment, raw with emotion and intensity. We then danced around the fire made from the burning effigies. 
drench champagne and set of fireworks. I even jumped through the flames, a tradition meant to bring good luck and chase away evil spirits. Only the Virgin of Quito stayed calm, watching our wild celebration with a judging look. As the first light of the new year began to creep into the sky, we prepared to leave for the airport. The air was thick with the lingering fog from the countless fires still smoldering in the streets, a hazy reminder of the crazy celebrations. We were about to embark on the next leg of our journey, a flight to the wild Galapagos Islands. If you are curious about what comes next, check out my video about it.